Hi and welcome to the Law and Ethics uh, module. Uh, so kicking off uh, trimester two uh, with this module, a really important uh, module for you to um, uh, get your head around. Uh, lots of work to do, but also um, a really important module. So uh, I'm going to run through some uh, slides through today's uh, lecture. Uh, and talk to you about a number of issues. So let me just put myself back down in the corner there and um, just move on to this. So um, the um, first thing to note is that this module really requires you to be looking at a particular book, um, Essential Law for Journalists. Now, in general, I um, uh, would recommend you access this through the library, but uh, for this module, I would say you need this book. Uh, you should uh, buy a, your own copy of this book. Uh, we don't ask you to buy many books. Don't expect you to uh, buy many books. As, as I say, you are able to access it through the library, um, but you will find it very, very useful if you um, uh, have a copy of this book uh, available. Each week I'll be telling you which chapters to read um, and um, uh, you'll really, really be able to stay up to speed if uh, you're looking at this book. So it's McNay's Essential Law for Journalists uh, by Mark Hanna and uh, Mike Dodd. Um, it's really important you get the 25th edition. This was the edition that was published in 2020. And the thing with the law is that it constantly updates. And so this book constantly updates. You can see by the number of editions there's been. So it's important you buy the 25th edition or you access the 25th edition um, if you do it through the library. But um, just to stress again, I would if you if there's any uh, uh, possibility of uh, buying this book, um, whether um, through your Advantage Fund or uh, sorry your Inspire Fund or um, any other way, please do so. There are uh, updates um, on the McNay's website. There's a link there, um, and you'll also find uh, further reading in addition to this book um, on Blackboard. Um, so you'll be a uh, familiar with Blackboard uh, by now. Um, so as you see, that's just popping off the side of the uh, um, go, uh, side of the slide. Um, so you'll see it on Blackboard. Uh, so the reading list is down there on the left-hand side in the left-hand menu. So make sure you're looking at the reading list. You'll see McNay's at the very top of that list, but also there are other sources. So when you come to do uh, your work, including uh, um, an, uh, your assignment, and there's an essay assignment, which we'll talk about in a moment, uh, you're looking at that reading list. So look at Blackboard. You'll find all of the uh, learning materials on there. You'll find the reading list, but also you'll find uh, these videos uh, each week. You'll also find uh, material for the workshops, which we'll be having uh, each week. So make sure you are looking at those. OK, so what are we going to do? Um, so I'm going to um, run through quite a few things today. So I need to de devote quite a lot of time to, uh, to uh, catching up on all of this. Uh, I'll divide this up into a number, probably three videos, I think. Um, so uh, uh, you'll see all of those on Blackboard. So I just want to start off by talking about why we should bother with uh, law. Um, why can't you just be a journalist without knowing the law? Well, I'll try and explain that. Um, uh, I want to talk a little bit about more about the module and then look at the assessments. I'll then break and start a new video. Uh, and then I want to talk about the basic principles of law, where law comes from, and the different types of law. Uh, criminal and civil law. Then I'll break again and we'll do another video then uh, which is going to look at the courts and so different types of courts and how the courts work. Um, so that's what we're going to do in this uh, series of uh, videos. So um, I'd like you to have a think for a moment of um, if you were stranded on a desert island and uh, uh, all of us, uh, some 140 uh, uh, of us were stranded on a desert island uh, and there really was no prospect of us being rescued. What laws, what rules would we invent to make sure that we could all get, al get along together? So have a think about that. Just, um, just start with a blank piece of paper and think what rules would you invent to make sure that we could all um, uh, live together uh, peacefully? So have a think about that. Press pause and write some bits down. I'll uh, move on to the next slide and join me again when you are ready, when you've got some things down. So these are the things I thought we'd have particular types of rule, we'd have groups of rules, I think. So, we'd, so first of all, we'd want to protect people. So I think we'd have uh, some basic rules about it 
uh, not not being allowed to kill each other, not being allowed to hurt each other in any particular way. So there'd be a whole host of uh, rules which we'd, we'd probably write around that. And you've probably got some of those down your list. The next section of uh, the rules you've probably come up with is we need to protect property. So um, if uh, we've all got a coconut uh, for our for our tea, um, I think we're going to have rules to say that one person is the biggest person can't go around and nicking everyone's uh, everyone's coconut. So we'd probably want to protect property, but we'd probably start getting a bit more um, nuanced than that. We'll probably get into some sort of finer detail about uh, how do we protect property. And then lastly, we'd probably want to have some sort of sense of justice. Um, I was uh, thinking if someone did break a rule, if someone did kill somebody or someone did steal my coconut, how would we go about um, establishing who did it how, and um, what would that, that process be? How would we protect that process to make sure that we weren't just in a world of rumour and gossip and uh, people just making wild allegations all the time? Uh, and also, how would we make sure that someone had a, a fair hearing? If, um, if I was accused of stealing your coconut and I denied it, how would we go about establishing whether I was guilty or not? Um, so we would have some sort of sense of protecting justice. You may have come up with some, uh, some other areas, some other rules, uh, but just if you think about those sort of basic areas, those are the basic rules which underpin the law. So all we're doing is um, looking at really common sense exactly the things that you and I would do if we were stranded on a desert island together. We would have certain rules and that's what the law is. It's a set of rules to try and make sure that we can all live together uh, and, um, and to protect this sense of justice that we all have. So don't be overawed by the idea of the law and lots of books and uh, dusty libraries and all of that. It's not that. The law is a fundamental set of rules which govern society. So if you see it like that, hopefully it kind of feels a little bit less intimidating. So why is it important? Uh, let's have a think about this. The, the fact is, if we start making legal mistakes, it costs money um, and um, that can cost you your job. Uh, so uh, it's important that you learn, know the law. You're no longer a private citizen who you might have uh, said all sorts of things on social media. I hope not, but I, I hope you from this point on uh, be more careful because you're now a professional journalist. Um, but if you don't know the law, you can make mistakes which cost money and it can also um, destroy lives and careers, including yours. If you get it wrong, if you, get, if you make legal errors, you can destroy not only your own career, but you can have a massive impact on other people. So we're going to try and make sure you don't uh, blunder into any of those things. Also, the law is a great way of uh, finding uh, good stories. If you, if you know how to... Um, uh, operate legally and safely, you know how to get right to the, the edge of what's acceptable. That's where the great stories are. So um, the more confident you are of the law, the better a journalist you become. So here's just a couple of examples. Um, so a fairly recent uh, example, Christopher Jeffries. He was uh, a, uh, a former teacher who rented out um, rooms in a house. Um, and uh, one of the people who he rented out a room to was called Joanna Yates. Now, Joanna Yates uh, went missing uh, one Christmas and her body was found next to a railway um, a railway line. Uh, now, uh, Christopher Jeffries seemed to have um, uh, really only committed one uh, crime and that was to have really bad hair uh, because the world, uh, the, the police, but uh, the world's media started to suspect him of being the person who had abducted and killed Joanna Yates. And a whole load of front pages were, uh, were printed and uh, media speculation started about um, Christopher Jeffries as her landlord, that he was the person who was uh, the, the prime suspect in this, uh, in this murder case. He wasn't, he was completely innocent, um, uh, but uh, a lot of um, um, rumors started around him. It ended up with a number of newspapers being fined for something called contempt of court. And we're going to be talking about that next week, about what contempt of court means, which is basically undermining that sense of justice, breaking those rules of justice we talked about on our desert island. Um, so you can see how important it is. It can cost vast amounts of money, but also his life was ruined, uh, for, certainly for that period of time, by uh, the rumours that were spread, being spread about him being responsible for a terrible crime, which he had uh, not committed. The Millie Dowler case, hopefully you'll know about Millie Dowler. She was the, um, she was the case that really sparked the whole phone hacking 
scandal. Uh, she was a young woman who was um, uh, killed and a number of uh, um, uh, newspapers turned out to be involved in hacking her phone um, messages to try and find out information about her. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll talk about the Millie Dowler case as well. Um, it's, uh, her case is not only about the ethical side of, of hacking into someone's phone messages, something you must never do, uh, it's illegal and it's unethical, um, but also it highlighted another issue that um, newspapers, the way they reported on the trial of the person who, who killed Millie Dowler, um, uh, they uh, undermined those uh, rules of justice again. They were in contempt of court because they published um, information about Levi Belfield, the man who killed Millie Dowler, uh, before um, uh, verdicts came back on some other crimes he had committed. So therefore, the jury found out lots of things about him, which they uh, they weren't supposed to know yet. They couldn't make a fair decision about him until um, uh, until they had finished their deliberations without all this extra information, all these rumours and all this gossip. So contempt of court, really important area of law. We'll look at that next week. I talked about it destroying careers. Well, it can destroy newspapers as well. So uh, the news of the world um, uh, was um, shut down in 2011, one of the most successful newspapers uh, in the UK, uh, on the back of the hacking scandal. When it turned out what uh, their journalists had been up to by hacking into people's voicemails. Millie Dowler was uh, uh, an obvious example, but also to a number of celebrities' um, voicemails. Uh, and it actually led to the news of the world being forced to close down because of the unethical and illegal behaviour which uh, their journalists have been um, involved in. But it also led to uh, the former editor of the News of the World being sent to prison. Andy Coulson was sent to prison. He was also uh, David Cameron's former press advisor out of interest. But he was sent down for uh, 18 months for uh, conspiracy to intercept voicemails. That means phone hacking. Um, so you can get uh, sent to prison uh, if you uh, are either ignorant of or contemptuous of the law. If you, uh, if you disobey the law, if you break the law, you can end up in prison. Other examples of what's been going on, this, this one's still rumbling on. Uh, Meghan Markle, she uh, is taking legal action against the mail over a series of letters that were uh, published in the mail. Uh, that's rumbling through the courts at the moment because they, she says it breached her privacy. She's using the law to defend her privacy. So again, we're going to be looking at um, what are the rules, what, are, what is the law of privacy, what can you do and what can't you do. So I looked at the, uh, the Manchester Evening News just to try and highlight how uh, important the law is to everything we do as journalists. And I went through and tried to uh, spot stories on their homepage that involved um, uh, legal knowledge. So their main story on that day uh, was a, uh, um, uh, a court case. There was a, a police legal story uh, down in the middle of this, uh, the page there, another court case there, and another court case. So if you don't know how to, um, if you don't know your law, you would be excluded from doing any of those stories on the uh, MEN's homepage. And if you can't do any of those stories, then you're no use to the Manchester News and you'd be no use to any other publishing organisation if you don't know the law. Um, so that's how important it is. That's just a snapshot. Look today, have a look at uh, um, the Manchester News or any other website, any other news website, and see how many stories there are which involve the law. So law and ethics is central to good journalism, fundamental uh, to your ability to be a good journalist. So um, there's whole areas, and we'll be running through all of these. You don't need to remember all of these at the moment, but through the, uh, the next uh, 10 to 12 weeks, you'll be learning about all of these areas. So if you're reporting on court, you need to know the law. If you're picking up pictures from somebody, if you're asking for uh, a photograph of uh, something that happened, somebody else's photograph, you need to know about copyright. If you're doing a celebrity story, you need to think about uh, the laws of privacy. If you're dealing with young people, people under the age of 16 in terms of print and online, and actually it's 18 for, um, uh, for broadcasters, um, you need to be aware of um, uh, the Children and Young Persons Act, as well as the Editor's Code and the Ofcom Code. So there's, there's rules around the way we deal with young people. Um, reporting on sex crimes, there's a Sexual Offences Act, we'll be talking about that, and then also uh, libel affecting every journalist. Libel is a really important thing. If you're slagging someone off, you're um, uh, criticising someone with uh, bringing their reputation down without good reason, an acceptable reason under the Defamation Act, then you're committing libel. You need to be really careful about that, so we'll talk about that. 
I say, don't worry about understanding all the details at the moment, but just understand that there are laws which control what we do uh, on an uh, everyday basis. So what does the law do? It allows us to tell the truth, but it allows us to tell the truth with honour and compassion. So it's really important you understand um, how you tell the truth, but you do so legally and ethically. It also allows us to become a confident newsroom professional. If you, if you understand the law, if you're confident with the law, it means you're able to tell stories without being worried about, um, are, you, are you breaking the law? Can you do this? Can you not do this? We all have to refer back to um, books quite often to McNeys. As an um, editor, I would always keep McNeys in my desk drawer, which is why I'm suggesting you buy it, uh, because it's a professional tool which you will need through your career. Um, um, and if you understand the law, you'll understand uh, what you can and you can't do. Um, and that's a really important point. You need, as a confident journalist, you need to understand what you can publish rather than constantly thinking, oh, I'm not sure I can do that, so I'll just stay safe, I'll stay away from the edge uh, because I don't really understand the law. So if, as long as I just tell boring, safe stories, that'll be okay. Well, yeah, you might be okay legally, but you'll be a rubbish journalist. So it's important you understand the law so you can tell the best stories. And this is just an example of what happens when people don't really understand the law and not confident in the law? Jimmy Savile. Jimmy Savile got away with terrible crimes for years because people were scared to tell the story, to reveal what he'd done. People knew what he had been up to. They just didn't have the confidence uh, in, um, uh, in their legal abilities to be able to tell the story about the abuse Jimmy Savile had been involved in. So um, that shows how uh, important important it is that you are confident in the law and that you know what you can and you cannot say so you can tell stories and expose people like Jimmy Savile. So let's just run through the module preview. Let's have a look at um, what you're going to be doing in, um, uh, in this module. So I'll make sure that the videos are available each week, um, uh, early each week. And you need to watch the video, which you're watching now, um, but you need to watch uh, the, the video, probably in several parts, before the Thursday workshop. So uh, make sure you've looked at the video lectures uh, for each week before the Thursday workshop. Um, on Thursdays, uh, having watched the video uh, lecture, you will uh, then turn up to your um, workshop. You'll look on your personal timetable and you'll see which one to turn up to. You only go to one. You don't go to all four. There's this, I'm, I'll be at all four, but you'll be at one of those. And I, I just want to try and keep the group sizes down so that we can have some sort of discussion. So look at the, uh, your personal timetable, uh, which you can avail, uh, access through that um, URL, tt.salford.ac.uk, uh, and log in and you'll see your personal timetable and you'll see which group you are in. Um, this is the subjects we're going to be covering week by week. So there's going to be um, an introduction to the law and courts then we're going to move on to contempt next week uh, then uh, looking at defamation we're going to spend two weeks on defamation you'll be with Sarah Hadwin for that I'll do a bit of a recap week after that then we're going to move on to the issues of privacy and confidentiality a really important area of law then uh, we're going to look at things like juveniles and sex offenses in, um, uh, in the following week uh, and just to be aware of that just a uh, to flag up to you. We'll be talking about some sensitive issues in that. It's important that you understand about uh, anonymity and how do we report on things like sexual offences. So um, just be aware. I just want to really stress that we will be talking about some sensitive issues in that week when we're talking about anonymity. So be aware of that. Um, and uh, if you have any concerns about that, you might want to consider how you uh, engage with, uh, with those lectures. Um, then we'll be talking about freedom of expression. What, what can we say and when can we say it? After that, we'll be talking about press regulation and ethical codes. The Ipso, uh, Ipso Editor's Code will be at the heart of that. Then we'll talk about uh, copyright, what um, uh, pictures and material can you use and what can't you use. And then we'll be doing uh, some revision uh, towards the end of the module. So that's the, uh, oh, the preview of the, of the module. So what are your assessments going to be? Well, the first assessment is an essay. 50% of the mark will rely on an essay. And I'll be releasing the essay question uh, uh, very soon. I haven't uh, put that together yet, but uh, there's no need to. We haven't uh, even started learning about the law yet, but I will let you know what the essay question is very soon. Um, and the submission deadline for that will be Friday, March the 19th. So that's the very last day before we break for the Easter um, vacation. 
so we've got a little bit of time to pull that together. As I say, I'll be releasing that uh, essay question very soon. Um, you'll get the feedback for that 15 working days later. You'll, again, you'll be getting used to these things within the world of universities. Um, you get feedback and grades from an assessment 15 working days after you've submitted it. So the essay question is coming soon. The second assignment is an exam. The other half of the, uh, the mark for the module rely on a 90 minute uh, exam, which you'll be doing online. That'll be on May the 18th. Um, so it's a way off yet. Plenty of time uh, to, uh, for us to learn about the law and for you to be able to revise about the law. Um, 10 a.m. on May the 18th, and it's an online exam. You'll be logging on to uh, Blackboard and doing the exam on there. So just make sure you're aware of that. Again, you'll get a great feedback 15 working days later. Feels like a lifetime away, I'm sure, May the 18th, but it probably will come around faster than you think. Um, so um, make sure you're staying on top of everything as we go through. Um, key thing about the exam is that you have to pass the exam. In most um, modules, uh, you just get a, an overall uh, average between the, um, uh, the two assignments, and as long as you pass your overall averages are passed, then you pass the module. Law and ethics is a little bit different. Because of the accreditation from the British Journalism Training Council, so it broadcasts Journalism Training Council, um, they insist that you have to pass the exam. So you must pass the, uh, the exam, get more than 40% or more in order to pass this module. So be aware of that. Uh, so you need to take the exam seriously and make sure you do plenty of work. If you turn up to each week, watch the lectures, uh, come to the workshops, do the reading that I'll tell you about each week, you'll be fine. It's, um, it's very easy. The, um, uh, the exam only becomes a problem if you don't turn up, don't do the reading, and then just try and busk it on the day, uh, you're likely to become unstuck. So that's the first section over and done with. So um, we've been through why we think the law is important. We've looked at uh, the preview of the module and uh, we have had a preview of the assessments. So I'm going to end this video now and then I'll uh, start another one if you'll join me again um, in the second video where I'll be looking at some of the basic principles and sources of the law.